Imagine, if you will, that we are in Paris. We are Monday, 21st of August, 1911. Suddenly, from the Salon Carré in the Louvre Museum, a cry breaks the quiet of this summer morning. It is a robbery! It is a robbery! Oh la la! My goodness! What did they take? It is terrible, sir. They took the Mona Lisa. started rather well. The summer sun rose very early that morning and was already lighting up the streets of Paris. Like any Monday morning, a whole army of workers, clerks, businessmen and shopkeepers was filling the streets, eager to start their work week and earn their living. In the cafes, the crowd presses against the counters for breakfast, and the smell of coffee and freshly baked croissant in the air. In the street, a man walks slowly but surely towards the Louvre Museum. It is a Monday, and like every Monday, the museum is closed to the public, though. The staff takes opportunity to tidy up and repair the museum before the start of a new week. This man is Vincenzo Perugia, an Italian immigrant in his early thirties who came to France a few years before these events in the hope of a better life and a stable job. His experience and, let's say it, impeccable skills as a house painter and carpenter, got him a good position in the famous renovation company Maison Gobier. And Maison Gobier has just finished, a few days ago, a big contract with the Louvre Museum, where they fitted a thousand six hundred works of art with made-to-measure glass casings to protect them against vandalism. Perugia and four other workers have done this huge task, but Perugia was so skilled that he was assigned to do all the paintings in the Salon Carré by himself. You know Salon Carré. That's where the Louvre showcases its most beautiful Italian Renaissance paintings, including Mona Lisa. So, for the duration of the work, he was able to admire the masterpieces of his ancestors, the pride of his home country. All these would probably still be in Italy if Napoleon didn't pillage the whole of Europe, he thinks. Italian eyes would be able to see these works of art, he thinks. Not this snooty French. Since he has arrived in Paris, together with thousands of immigrants from Sicily, Tuscany, Calabria, Perugia has faced an anti-Italian backlash from the French. Everybody fights for their bread, I guess. Everyday men are often afraid of what they don't know. And even if we understand that, Perugia's pride to be an Italian is hurt. Perugia arrives in front of the museum staff entrance. The contract with Maison Gobier was finished a few days ago, and surely he should not be able to enter like that. But he puts on a white smoke like any other museum worker and drowns himself in the sea of men and women entering the museum. Nobody even notices him. 
is in the museum's corridors, incognito. He knows the way to the Salon Carré by heart and lets his feet guide him. He stops in front of Mona Lisa. She seems to be smiling at him approvingly. We thought about it a lot. Of all the paintings in this gallery, Mona Lisa La Gioconda is the best bet for him. You see, it's not that it is famous, to be honest, at this time, it was not as popular as it is today, just another portrait among a heap of work from the Renaissance. But with a size of 53 by 77 centimeters, it is the easiest painting to hide when it will go out. A look on the right, a look on the left, it's alone. No time to waste. He grabs the painting and its casing from the four metal prongs on the wall and runs to a service staircase nearby. There, he removes the glass and the frame. Oh! Mona Lisa is painted on wood, not on canvas. So he can't dismantle and roll it up. We do what we do. Quickly removes his smock and wraps the painting with it. Carries it under his arm and he exits by the staff entrance the same way he came. In the streets, he is elated. He did it. He did it. And while he walks, slowly to avoid suspicion, the museum realizes the theft and rings the alarm. All the doors are closed, the police is caught, and the giant manhunt will start to find the enigmatic smiling lady. Perugia finally reaches his small apartment and sits down, looking at the face of Mona Lisa. Oh, what has it done? He would have never thought he could have done something like that. It's so beautiful. The pride of the end. He carefully places the precious painting in a trunk where it will stay for the next two years. Yeah, two years. You heard well. Perugia is waiting for his next trip back to Italy before doing anything. He lays low in the meantime, living his life as if nothing has happened. But boy, did something happen. The police is everywhere, looking for the famous painting. No less than 60 detectives are sniffing all possible leads, interrogating all thieves, sellers, and buyers of the art world's underbay. They even suspect Guillaume Apollinaire, a highly regarded French poet, who then snitched on Pablo Picasso, but nobody knows or has heard of Mona Lisa being on the market. So where? Painting. With so much publicity, more people now go and see the empty space in the Louvre Museum than they were going to see the painting itself. In 1913, Perugia finally has saved enough money and decided to go back to Italy. On the way there, you already imagine how the crowd would give him a triumph. He who had written a work from Leonardo da Vinci to his home country. In Florence, he doesn't really know how to go about it, though. So in December 1930, he contacts Alfredo Gary, owner of an art gallery in the center of Florence. Perugia is expecting a reward for returning this masterpiece to Italy. But Gary is not sure what to do. Reassuring Perugia, he keeps the painting to have it authenticated by Giovanni Poggi, who is the director of the Galleria degli Uffizi, one of Florence's most prominent and famous art museums. There is no doubt this 
is the original, the genuine Mona Lisa. So they call the police, who will go and arrest Perugia in his hotel. Before being returned to the Louvre, where La Gioconda will now take its place as the most famous painting in the world, they organize a small traveling exhibition through Italy, the last goodbye before going back to France. Perugia is judged and sentenced to one year in jail. He will only spend seven months there. When he is freed, he goes and serves the Italian army during World War I and later on gets married and goes back to live in Paris with his family to open a great shop. The irony of all this Mona Lisa was not pillaged from Italy by Napoleon. Da Vinci finished painting her when he was living in France, and once completed, it was simply sold to the king, Francis I, in 1818. In fact, this must have been one of her first times. 